join me in the kitchen today as I am making our Christmas goodies for the season. And then at the end, I will show you how to put together a really simple but pretty tablescape. All of the recipes that I have in this video will be linked below for you to enjoy with your family. This recipe is a family favorite that has been handed down from my grandma. Some people mistake these cookies for sugar cookies, but they are very different from a sugar cookie. They are called animal cookies, and this is how we make them. For this recipe, you are going to need three eggs, one cup of sugar, two sticks of butter, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of cream of tartar, one teaspoon of vanilla, after you have mixed the wet ingredients together, you add three cups of flour. Then you are going to mix that into the wet ingredients. After you have mixed the dough together, you are going to place it on some saran wrap. And you are going to fold the saran wrap over it. and you are going to let this sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours. After your dough has sat in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours, I like to just put my flour on my cupboard and then I can just slide the whole mess right into the sink when I'm done. I don't think you can get too much flour with this recipe. This dough is pretty sticky so it needs the flour on the top of it when it comes out and as you work with it every time you work with it you just keep flour laid down on your countertop you are also going to want to continue to generously put flour on your rolling pin so your rolling pin does not stick to the dough you are going to need some of your favorite cookie cutters for this recipe and you are also going to need to preheat your oven to 350. A little tip, if your dough is pretty sticky and it's sticking to your cookie cutters, you can always put your cookie cutter into flour and give that a little coat and then it won't stick to the dough as much. I sprayed my cookie sheets very well with cooking spray and I make sure that I put a lot of room in between each cookie because they puff up pretty well. So I have two cookie sheets ready to go in the oven and they will be baking for eight minutes. Once the cookies have cooled completely, we take buttercream frosting and we put that on each cookie and then we just take a whole bunch of goodies and we let our imaginations run wild with decorating. This year I have coconut, pecans, some walnuts, lots of different sprinkles and different colored sugars, chocolate chips, raisins, and Red Hots. For this recipe, you are going to need two eggs, one cup of sugar, one and a fourth cups of shortening, one cup of brown sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of oatmeal, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to mix these ingredients together at this point. Once the ingredients are mixed, you're going to add two cups of flour. I'm going to very carefully mix this again, just so the flour doesn't go all over my kitchen. Now you are going to add a half a cup of coconut and a six ounce package of chocolate chips. And then you will mix that. But if we step outside of the recipe and we add some chopped pecans to it. And now we mix it up. You take a cookie sheet and you spray it with cooking spray. I like to take this little rounded tablespoon to measure out my dough. Place the cookie dough on the cookie sheet going to put this in an oven on 350 for 12 to 15 minutes.
for our fudge, it's very simple. It turns out perfect every time and it is delicious. So you take three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, a can of the sweetened condensed milk. You let that melt down and then you're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. You're going to line a nine by nine cake pan with wax paper. Once the chocolate chips are melted, you are going to pour that into this pan, and then we set ours in the refrigerator for a little while to set up. Okay, we usually do two batches of this fudge. This one has walnuts in it, and the next one will have no walnuts in it. Okay, and this is our peanut butter fudge, which is actually new to us this year. So you take a half a cup of peanut butter and a can of sweetened condensed milk, Jason's working up his muscles, stirring the fudge. You take one teaspoon of vanilla and let it come to a bubble and get all melty. And then we're going to put it in a pan and set it in the refrigerator. Oh, it looks so good. Yes, it does. These are the ingredients for our peanut butter balls. I'm going to measure them out and put them in the mixer. For the chocolate to dip the peanut butter balls into, you just melt two cups of chocolate chips, but I do three because I always run out of the chocolate sauce. And then it calls for one tablespoon of Crisco shortening, but I do a tablespoon and a half. For my Christmas table this year, I am using my centerpiece that I made for the Goodwill Challenge. I will have that video of how I put it together down below. These little lambs, my friend Dana makes these and I will have her information down below if you want to order any from her. She does lots of different things. She makes wax melts and she goes with a beautiful country vibe. My little ball jars, I got those from my friend Dana also. I took some twine and wrapped it around the top of the jar. I added a metal star to the twine and I tied it on in just a simple knot. The metal star I actually cut out of a Dollar Tree tin pan. On the inside of the jar I added some Epsom salt so it looks like snow. And then a tea light candle sits perfectly on the top. My place settings, the charger is from Pier 1. My plate set is Corel. I'll have that linked below. I took the napkins that are also from Pier 1 and I tied them into a bow shape, which I will have those instructions linked below if you are interested. It's a very simple way to dress up a Christmas table. The ribbon I got from the Dollar Tree and it has some um, crystal sparkle. On the back of it, I just placed a glue dot to hold it in place. 